my 25 year marriage is completely dead with no desire to try to fix it. It was a great sex life until one day it wasn't. How often do you hear that? so much for joining us today on Second Act TV. I'm so happy to welcome a new guest to Second Act, board certified OBGYN for over 30 years and a pioneer now in hormone balancing and women's wellness and sexual health, especially as we age, Dr. Gail Jackson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm like so excited to be here. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy to have you here. You, uh, you, you're one of the, well, few doctors <laughs> that, uh, well, that I seek out, that I have sought out, that have absolutely changed my life uh, with bioidentical hormone balancing. And while I don't want to, uh, you know, dedicate the segment today on that, we may want to talk about that down the road. I really want to bring your expertise, everything that you've learned, everything that you've seen in your practice with women going through the change and what that does to relationships, uh, you know, and, 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 and help us understand both women and men, what is happening and what we can do about it. Yeah. Do you have like three months to talk? <laughs> I'm excited to be here and I have a lot to share. I'd like to uh, start actually with a uh, viewer comment that is so representative of what we get on this channel all the time. And he wrote, well, he wrote, so I'm a man uh, looking this up, meaning menopause and relationships. And, you know, and so he said, never mind sex drive. My 25 year marriage is completely dead with no desire to try to fix it. She seems happy to never, you know, and is never bothered by it. It was a great sex life until one day it wasn't. How often do you hear that? Well, that sounds like a day in the life of my practice. And then we followed up with, with one of the recent texts that we got from a patient. And she says, oh my God, Dr. Gale, I'm feeling a lot of relief from the hot sweats, the night sweats and the hot flashes. Haven't had one in close to two weeks. My libido is out of this world. Thank you so much. My husband is so excited. We, we're running around the house chasing each other. He cannot believe how how much sex I want to have with him. And wow, what did yeah. what have done to our relationship? Mm -hmm. So um, hormone hormone um, depletion and deprivation during menopause is real. So it's real. And hormone balancing, as you just heard, can really help. Yeah, well, and, and I can attest to that. I, uh, you know, I, I did it 12 years ago. I, well, I, in my case, I, I, my marriage ended because of it or yeah. well, partially because of it. There are other things that go on that obviously ended, but it was, it was a huge part of it. And the biggest thing that I wish we could communicate to our viewers who are listening, and many of them are, are going through this, both men and women is that there is in fact hope that women don't necessarily lose their libido, but their des the desire to have sex is tied to a lot of things that you, you know, as, as, as a doctor, as a gynecologist, as, as someone who, who, who deals with this, you also almost become a bit of a psychologist or psychiatrist too, don't you? Yes, and uh, women come to me and men also, because they say, I love my partner, I love being with my partner. We used to love to have sex. So why don't I want to have sex with them anymore? And I think, Soki, they're a bit relieved when they realize it's not in their head. Because once we talk to them and we get some lab work and we look how low their testosterone level is, and we then they feel relieved because they say, am I crazy? I want this man. I want this marriage. And I really appreciate women who still want to try and understand how much intimacy is, how important intimacy is in a marriage. And I think one of the things that women need to know, I'm in a very long-term relationship marriage. My, my father, as I said, my father told me, gave me so much information, which I was way too young when he told me, do I really need to know all this? But one thing he told me, and remember he's a father of the 60s, et cetera. And he says, never deny your husband. And really what that means is to, in today's world, what I see is men come to women, their partners, 
to have sex and need way more than just the pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, and if women knew how important sex was to their relationship and how they can pulse what's going on in, our, in their man's life, because as we know, most men don't talk about it. Sex will tell it all. When he's happy and he's content at work and he's achieving and he's doing well and feeling good about himself, he wants to have sex with you. And often he comes to you because he's nervous, he's scared, and he wants the comfort. And I think women really um, diminish the val their value to men as a comforter, more, which is often as important as a sexual partner. So men want sex with their partner for many reasons. Sometimes they just need to be held by, by their partner. You, you make such a great point. You know, your 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 uh, father of the '60s, the the rearing of the '60s. My mother was like that. She was the one that said, you know, we just have to, you know, you you have to do what your man wants to do. Just a member of the word she used, just let it, just let it go over you, like 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 just you know, just get through it. <laughs> and that's that's horrible because a lot of us do carry that or still have some of that in our head, and that certainly doesn't help when we get into menopause. But I love the way that you explained, you know, uh, well, that, that, that what women really need to understand how much the men need, because we often talk about that men need to understand what we're going through in order to give us the support. And it really goes both ways. I, I, I kind of love your, your, your little tough love to women. Talk, talk to me about that a little more. Yeah, a, couple, a, a woman came to me and I've known her and she's a bit overweight and she's married to this amazing guy. I knew him from work. He had really powerful position, very tall, very handsome, very good looking, wonderful personality. So she came to my office and I asked her, I said, as part of the um, exam, um, how is your sex life? You know, and she says, oh, it's fine. I said, well, how often are you having sex? She's like, ah. she said, we well, know when I lose weight, I will, you know, nah, nah. and I asked her, I said, so I know your husband. So who's he having sex with? And she was really astonished and really so upset with me that she left my practice. But I Hope I gave her food for thought. And if I think women knew that men love women who love to have sex with them, if they knew how powerful it was, and I don't mean obligatory sex, of course, there's a slang term to that, but just enjoy, enjoy. having sex with them, enjoy their bodies and made them feel alive and vital again. You can get any and everything you want from a man when he feels that you love to have sex with him. And so I think that's important. So I, when I share this with this woman, that, you know, the question, because she never thought in her mind, she thought, if I make the decision that there's no sex, then he should not have any desire for sex. And there's not going to be any sex in this relationship. And he should be just fine with that. So it's fine when, because there are people who have sex once a year. And if that's fine for both of them, that's fine. But if a man wants to have sex two, three times a week, and a woman wants to have sex once every six months, we, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we do. And, and that is something women need to understand. And again, you use the word not obligatory sex, because I agree, if you really don't want to have sex, you shouldn't have to have sex. But what you do need to be aware of, though, is the consequences of not having to have sex. And if you're okay with that, then, you know, like I was, I was in a 10 year, my, well, I was married 25 years, 10 years, no sex. And I, I, I didn't care, I wanted out. And some people do get to that point. And it's okay if you get to that point and you want out. However, if it really truly is, because we have um, been led to believe that this is what happens as we age, that women lose their sex drive, which is one of the biggest myths out there, then that's where we really have to educate people and get to them, what, like with what you said, right? Right. And, and like you said, women are so surprised often when the husband leaves. Let's think about your husband. He's a provider for you. She said, yeah, so he's amazing provider for your children. I know your family. And I said, so how would you grade? And what grade would you give him? And she said, oh, definitely 95%. And I said, a guy, this, a 95% guy should be turning it down. He should be saying, baby, please let me sleep. Um, so, and I also want women to think that if you're getting, uh, you know, often we, we, we feel we're easy to live with, but if you're really kind of getting, you know, 95% of what you want in a relationship, you have, it goes both ways. You want to look and see what does he need? What does he want? And how can I keep this alive and fiery? And I, I realize it's, it's kind of like two or three times the types of sex. Okay, it's the, like the maintenance stuff you do during the week once or twice. And then there's Saturday night, okay? And then there's vacation. 
So I think that when women go on vacation, they should spice it up. Men should spice it up too. But it often falls on our, our shoulders to be the one to you know, to take the initiative to kind of spice it up. If it's sexy lingerie or just, you know, just uh, having sex out on the balcony of the hotel or, you know, in an interesting places that you might get caught. I mean, it just kind of keeps the relationship alive. No, it is. It is true. Obviously, you have to want, which is one of the big keys. You have to want to have sex and still be attracted to a man. And we we get that there's there's reasons why women you know, they're just, they're just tired of it a lot. Lots of stuff has built up. There's resentment. There's like, I, you know, sex is something I control and then I'm going to control it. <laughs> of course, that's a horrible place to end up. But I do want to acknowledge, you know, that it's not just, just us that have to have to do it. But I think we've gotten into a, into a role where we, we don't maybe understand that. That being the case, what what would you tell men then? Because there are issues when we go through menopause. We do think, I think you were, uh, used the word, we feel like we're going crazy. Our bodies are changing and sometimes sex can be difficult. What, what do men do you think need to understand there that would help that? Well, I think the first and most important thing is to not ridicule a woman um, mm -hmm. and not uh, when she's going through menopause. I've been in situations and actually on a stage and it was so embarrassing. Actually a very high profile minister and his first lady was there and just fanning away and he was making a joke of it. It's not funny. And it, you know, so um you know try to understand it and try to walk through it together and try to be supportive of both partners of feeling the effects of aging, especially if you're in a place where youthfulness is so important. Every a woman need, wants to feel sexy and a relationship is always evolving. Se intimacy and sexual relationship starts with a woman in the morning with a hug, the way he comes home from work and how she's greeted. Those are those are more important elements of foreplay than the, the you know the things that we know you do in bed to just kind of rouse your central your central body. But those are really important because when when a woman feels secure and she more secure and she feels protected, then she's going to relax and she's going to be interested in having sex with you. And if there's actually a hormone imbalance, which it is, so it's real, it's, it's chemical, it's biological, and this is why you feel the way you feel. Yeah. Two things you said that I want to follow up on that I think are so important. One is you described really the importance of non-sexual touch, like a hug or, you know, touch, something where it isn't necessarily going to lead to sex. Because I think some women get turned off by that. The only time my guy touches me is, you know, when, when he wants to have sex. So yes, a hug, this. It, it's, sometimes it's so easy, really, to keep a woman, <laughs> you know, happy and interested that way. The other thing you said is testosterone, the importance of testosterone for women. And again, we this seg segment is, um, you know, the, the, we don't have enough time to talk about the importance of that. But the point being is that doctors like yourself, integrative physicians, who have learned about bioidentical hormones, there is help for this if you find the right practitioner. And we, we have about five minutes left or so on this segment. But how do you seek help for that? What could they do today to take action towards that? So I think it's important to acknowledge that there is something going on. Uh, I am board certified in OBGYN. I have all the Western training in the world and it's not in those texts. So really sort of search um, physicians who are more interested in integrative medicine, who understand how important hormones are um, to, to someone, get your hormone levels done, and then try some testosterone supplement. The problem with testosterone, and speaking of testosterone, we need a tenth of what men need. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, does it make a difference? And you're not going to grow hair. You're not going to look like a guy. You're not going to have an extra, you're not going to have an extra, as you call it, eggplant in the room, in the bed. But women need um, a women need a tenth of what men need. And um, we offer it in our office in the form of a bioidentical, bioidentical yam-based pellet, yeah. which I place underneath your skin and it slowly releases over four months. And so you come to see us every four months. So it's convenient yeah. and it's safer. So women can Google physicians who are specialized in bioidentical hormone pellets in their area. There are practitioners who, who offer that. They can also mm -hmm. start with the creams uh, testosterone is not available in a pill, I don't believe, but just the cream, but it's a challenge absorbing it. So yeah. um, re you research um, and understand there are some options and probably don't rest until you feel better. 
So, I mean, I, I just can't say enough. And I, I want to clarify that this is not, you know, I, I, I'm not paid to do this. <laughs> I'm not paid to introduce, you know, to, to promote you or this, or this uh, the pellets. I've been on it for 12 years. This literally changes your life. I mean, it changed my life in like three weeks. You know, I went from not wanting to have sex to, you know, like, like that the other woman that you mentioned at the beginning and it was one of the, <laughs> one of the everywhere. And, and that's why I think it's so important to get that out and get that understanding out. And yes, I absolutely, if you're in, you know, in the Los Angeles area or somewhere, you know, close, do uh, contact Dr. Gale. Uh, yeah, you, you have quite the practice going. I think you refer to uh, the, like a doctor to the stars or something. I know HIPAA, you can't tell us who. <laughs> yeah, they do, they, they do shout outs. And I have, you know, I, I get little texts from folks that like, oh my God, I was on, I was, I was watching TV and Vivica Fox was just talking how amazing you are or Beverly Johnson or because this is, they have spoken about me on verbally so I can share those two. The other day and said, I was at a bar having a drink with Vivica Fox and oh my God, I need to get in there. So <laughs> No, it is, it is, it is fun. And I, I am, well, anyway, I'm, I'm totally on board. You know, I've, I've been doing this for 12 years and that's why I can't talk about it enough. We are coming to the end. Is there anything else, uh, Dr. Gale, that you'd like to leave with our audience? Cause there's a couple other things I want to talk to you about on our next segment. Yeah. I think the thing is that intimacy in a relationship as we've shared is just so important and, mm -hmm. and relationships are ever evolving. They're always evolving. And it's also important for women to really understand what her what she needs and articulate what she needs to her husband and not expect him to know. For instance, it's hard for him to walk in the door from a tough day, kind of grumpy and barking, and then want to have sex with you. And you can just say, hey, honey, were you walking by here? Were you looking to come give your wife a kiss? Were you looking? And you're like, oh, yeah, right. And he'll come and give you a kiss. So it's really up to you because we're empowered now to get the, get the relationship and the satisfaction that you deserve and you want. It's up to you and you can do it. Great, great advice. Yes, and don't forget the non-sexual touch. That's always my big message. <laughs> Dr. Gail, I will link to all of your information in our show notes, you know, so people can get in touch with you. Thank you again, and we'll see you in our next segment on Second Act TV. Thank you. Mm -hmm.